Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Joel Pinteric, I'm a sound designer from Australia and on this channel I plan to upload a range of videos on synthesis, sound modeling and analysis and I um, hope to share with you my investigations on what makes up timbre and what makes things sound the way they do. So hope you enjoy it. Having often used synthesizers, from hardware synths to virtual instruments, I've come to appreciate their capabilities on a more fundamental level. I've been investigating the world of harmonics, sound spectrums, and ultimately, timbre, the tone quality of a sound. It's one thing to know how synthesizers work, but we can then form techniques to create unique sounds based on learned principles. The partials and noisy aspects of a sound, and how they change over time, is essentially what makes up the timbre. That timbre and tone quality is what allows us to distinguish one instrument from another while they may be playing the same note. So there were the sounds of violin, clarinet, glockenspiel, and finally a sine wave playing the note F3. And this graph is represented by the time on the horizontal axis and the frequency spectrum on the vertical axis. And the color intensity represents the loudness of the frequencies present. So even in one note, you can see that each sound has its own character of many frequencies including the less defined noisy aspects like the breath in the clarinet. I'll go over this in more detail in another video, but here's some of the main points. If we come from the right hand side, you can see the sine wave is a constant pure frequency, which is probably the simplest of all sounds. The glockenspiel is known for its bright overtones, which decay quickly compared to its fundamental frequency that is also at a softer level. The clarinet here is very strong and has a constant tone with bias towards the lower odd harmonics giving a hollow sound. You can see the first and third frequencies are the loudest there. Whereas the violin has a smoother frequency distribution across all its harmonics, which also fluctuate a lot more in volume with tremolo and also vibrato. Other examples could be, what spectra make up these timbres? Metallic versus wooden? Versus glassy? Breathy? Full versus hollow? Shiny and bright? Movement? Life? Abrasive? Aggressive? and so on. Essentially, we will find that timbre is illustrated and supplemented by spectrum analysis, more accurately than any other measurement outside of our own hearing. With modern technology and access to tools like Isotope Insight, we have a new objective scientific understanding and a way to solidify our creative choices. It is one of the most useful ways to measure a sound, not just because we can analyze all frequencies, but we can see how they will change over time. Of course, extra theory behind the sound will also help. Here's another quick overview of what makes Absinthe my favorite soft synth for many types of synthesis. So we've got that additive synth engine built into versatile wavetables. The wave can be transformed with FM, mixing, and various other methods, some of which are built into the oscillator module where you can modulate the parameters in real time rather than by editing the wavetable destructively. It has a semi-modular design which allows for various subtractive synthesis options and specialized filters. There are modulator types, frequency shifting, ring modulation and wave shaping which all alter the signal in real time. Granular options and finally it has versatile time-based effects from minuscule delay lines to resonating reverbs. The results are fascinating. <laughs> 